From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. Welcome to Unlock the Science. I'm Lawan Jila Suladet. In early 2021, at the International Film Festival Rotterdam, a Thai film director, Taiki Sakpisit, emerged as the winner of Fipresi Award for his film, The Edge of Daybreak. The jury, consisting of international film critics, honored the film for its mysterious atmosphere and rich imagery in depicting trauma and violence. Film Festival Rotterdam, whose mission is to champion independent filmmaking, is among the top-tier film festivals in the world. Several Thai films had won awards at this festival in the past decade. Taiki Sakpisit's The Age of Daybreak is a monochrome film about a family's mental state, reflecting the troubled history of Thailand, an implicit history spanning from the oppression of the student uprisings in the 1970s to the 2006 military coup. This is Taiki's first feature-length film. Although he has been making video art and installations for more than 10 years, his winning of this film award emerged as Deja Vu. Most Thai people don't know who he is. It is similar to the time when Apichat Pong, Virase Takun, won his very first award for Cannes Film Festival in 2002 for Blissfully Yours. Back then, people asked, who is this guy? Apichat Pong has risen to make his name in world cinema and is a giant figure in Thai indie film circle. He continues to win awards, in particular at Cannes Film Festival, including The Palm Dog or Golden Palm. His latest film, Memoria, starring the versatile Scottish actress Tilda Swinton, was shot entirely in Colombia. The film has already been selected for the main competition at the 2021 Cannes Film Festival. But most Thai people are not aware of these films. They are hardly shown in any local movie theaters or on mainstream television or cable networks. In short, Thai people are not exposed to these films. Even the Pip Chat Pong's Palm Dog film, Uncle Bun Mi, who can recall his past lives, got a very limited theater release in Thailand and was screened on cinemas only after he got the award. Part of it, as he mentioned in an interview, was that he had no budget to waste in promotion. Promotion is a key marketing tool to make a film known and draw people to see the movie. In Thailand, there are more than 300 foreign movies, mainly Hollywood blockbusters, show in theaters yearly. In contrast, there are fewer than 50 Thai movies show in theaters in a year. And among this small number, only a few are independently made movies. A study by Purin Pictures, a film fund based in Thailand aiming to support independent cinema in Southeast Asia, revealed that in 2018, there were 26 Thai indie films produced. So, where have all these films gone? We will get the context in the discussion with two indie filmmakers, Anocha Sukvishakorn Pong and Sopha Wan Bun Nimit. Anosha is a film director and producer. Her work is informed by the socio-political history of Thailand. Her first feature, Mundane History, won numerous awards including the Tiger Award from Rotterdam. Anosha's second feature, By the Time It Gets Dark, centers around a student massacre in 1976 in Bangkok. It was premiered in Locarno in Switzerland and has been screened in festivals such as Toronto, BFI London, Viennale, and Rotterdam. The film has won three Thailand National Film Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director, and was Thailand's submission to the Oscars. Anusha also co-founds and co-manages Pulin Pictures. Our next guest is Assistant Professor Dr. Zopa Wan Bun Nimit, Head of Motion Pictures and Still Photography Department, Faculty of Communication Arts, Jula University. 
Dr. Sopawan is also a filmmaker and visual artist whose works explore people who are in the fringe of society. Her first feature film, Is Must, which touched on Burmese migrants, was selected for the new current section at Busan International Film Festival. Recently, Sopawan has finished two feature length documentaries. Now, let's get behind the scenes of Thai indie filmmakers with Anocha and Sopawan. So how would you define Thai indie film? Let's start with Sopa One. Right now, it's a little bit narrowly defined. We're still referring to independent cinema, you know, as like difficult films, uh, something with like, like minimal dialogues, uh, something with like atmospheric um, film. But um, I think we could, you know, broaden the definitions to, you know, have the more alternative for the audience. Yeah, I, I would second that. I feel like uh, the term uh, indie film in Thailand is interchangeable with art house cinema, but I don't feel that should be the case. I also feel like you know you you can make like hugely like dramatic or entertaining film and make it in a, a way that is still an independently made film, so that. It can be an indie film made outside the studio system, but it can be like a, a real drama, you know, with maybe complicated in terms of plots. And but uh, we don't really see many, if any, of that kind of film. Maybe a little bit, maybe with no point. That is the no c h a r Indie film are often present in art house cinema because they feel like uh, not much about acting or drama or. Few dialogues and no movie stars, you know. Some say that it's difficult to digest. So, Anocha, what your takes? I would say that you have a, to be a little bit more open-minded and also, you know, open your heart. <laughs> you know, when you <laughs> go into a cinema to watch a kind of like indie film or art house film, because you know, like you said, maybe it doesn't seem to be much happening. And I still say this to my audiences before the screening of my films: that like, don't think too much while you're watching. Don't try to kind of put together the pieces. You know, just just let yourself go and be taken away uh, by by the film, and then you enjoy it a lot more. So, p a w a n what do you think? Yes, I think we are more or less still following the film festival trends, such as the so-called slow cinema. And uh, many independent filmmakers, you know, depend on the funding from the film festival and to make their films appealing. Sometimes they, you know, with conscious or unconscious awareness, need to cater for the film festival test. Although for some filmmakers, you know, to do that is strictly because of the budget limitations, and they need to use the non-professional actors, and and that perhaps you know limit that possibility of you know dramatic storytelling. And sometimes it's about the director vision and director intention, you know, to create something that in opposition to uh, mainstream cinema, you know, a minimal film to go against the extravaganza of Hollywood cinema. Will we ever see Thai indie film? Get commercial success. I think again, if the definition is broader, like an indie film can still have a famous stars, can have like uh, plots, maybe a little bit more entertaining for the viewers. Then yes, I think that indie films can be commercial success. But art house cinema, if you're talking specifically for art house cinema. I think it's quite hard to have a commercial success. You mean this is also true in terms of hard house cinema in Western world? Anywhere. And I just, uh, I just want to add that you know, I think for some country maybe it's possible. You know, like France and uh, perhaps uh, in South Korea as well, because they have that strong culture and the audience uh, have an open mind, and uh, you know they they want to see a challenging films. Um, so I think that's. Um, Also depends on the you know how strong of the film culture in each country as well. But to get a commercial success like in any other countries, you still have to have like the audience in mind. The mainstream s uh, cinema audience is different from art house cinema audience, so it's difficult to make the film that can appeal to both sectors. So there have been recognition and attention of Thai indie film from international film circuits. 
So what quality in Thai film that appeal to international film festival and critics? Anocha. You know, oftentimes um, the independent films are driven, and not just Thai indie films, you know, any uh, independently produced uh, films, very often are driven by the director's vision. I think aspect quality of these films are to do with the director's vision and um, the films offer a glimpse into a particular culture. And that's maybe the reason why these films have an appeal to international audience. With, with commercial films, the films tend to be driven by like the plots or characters. But like with the indie films, sometimes there's very little plot or characters seemingly don't do very much, but the films focus on atmosphere or social life of a particular milieu. Um, place and time. And so I think the international audience, the, the people who are interested in in other cultures, they tend to find it interesting to look at other cultures through the cinema. What are your thoughts, so far, one? I think there were several factors at the time. First, I think it was about, you know, the timing because a film festival is about um, making new discovery. You know, they compete to find fresh new works, you know, especially from the region that has been less explored in the past. Like, for example, in the 1990s, the focus was on uh, film directors from Iran and uh, East Asia. And the interest was continued on Southeast Asia in the late 1990s to the beginning of 2000s. Uh, at the time, Southeast Asia was in the financial crisis state. So I think, you know, the world is looking at Southeast Asia region. The second um, factor is uh, because we have the new crop of directors who have experience in making advertising films. You know, by combining the visual spectacle and new narrative styles, these new films, you know, also deeply rooted in local sensibilities. Um, you know, ranging from Abhishek Pong's Mistress Object and Noon to Mrs. Sassanat Tiang's uh, Tears of the Black Tiger. You know, this combination, you know, made these films appealing to international audiences, I think. And how competitive what is to get into those festivals? You know, I think this question is, I know Shad will, you know, better answer than, than me. But for me, it's very competitive, you know, especially um, for the newcomers, because, you know, the film festival is a big network. It's very difficult to submit the films by yourself and have it selected. It's also depending on the trend as well. Uh, right now, if you're like a, a female director, you have more chance. Or if you come from the uh, Central Asia region, you have more chance. You know, it also depends on the trend of the film festival. For the awards, like, you know, in any other competitions, sometimes it's about the politics. And uh, sometimes it's about the statement of the film festival. But of course, you know, the film has to have the, the merits in itself. I, I think uh, Kuyu has already answered like really in the you know like most eloquent way about the festivals. You know the thing is there are so many festivals, film festivals worldwide. Um, in the industry, people often call it the A-list film festivals, and then there are only a handful of these ones. These like Cannes, Berlin, Venice. Maybe Locan, Rotterdam, Busan. I mean, these are you know, really like A-list film festivals, and um, they are hard to get into. Uh, and then they're like a second tier, third tier. So it depends, you know, what what kind of film festivals you're talking about. In the US alone, I think there are like thousands of film festivals, and some actually exist just to make money. I mean, whether you like it or not, it's true. There's like, there are those film festivals that, you know, charge the filmmakers in order to like, you know, screen the films. And the, I mean, those are the film festivals that you better steer away from as a filmmaker, you know, they're like money making machine. Uh, they're not, I wouldn't even call them film festivals, but you know, I, I just want to say this because, you know, sometimes uh, the term film festival is used, uh, very, very liberally. We will continue our discussion after a short break. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. Cinema culture in Thailand centers around Hollywood blockbuster and star-studded local studio movies. 
where promotion is well planned and heavily invested. These are movies which theater operators give priority to, as they are expected to generate high revenue. This is also true with terrestrial TV, which remains the dominant mode of mainstream television in Thailand, and subscription cable television. As they depend on advertising revenue or subscriber fees, it is on the safer side to program well-known movies, even they are old. However, with new media platforms such as streaming, we may have options to see more independent cinema. A study by Purin Pictures shows that Southeast Asian indie films earn their revenue most by sale via video or on-demand streaming, which has become the dominant distribution channel of these films. In 2018, the study said 30% of Southeast Asian indie films' revenue was generated by subscription video on demand, or SVOD. This was followed by 21% of earnings from screening fees for screenings such as at festival or museum exhibition, and 13% from cable TV, and 10% from broadcasting television. As VOD is provided by video streaming services such as Netflix, HBO Max, and YouTube TV. Let's get back to the film directors, Anocha and So Pawan, to hear their experience in distribution and earning issues. And why we don't see those indie film or those award-winning film? Let's start with Anocha. The problem is really, it's not the only problem, but I think the, the main problem is to do with distribution. It's incredibly hard to get an indie film um, screen in commercial cinemas. You know, we often have to negotiate with the cinema owners or cinema operators to, to try to secure the slots. And then, of course, you know, the, it, it, unlike um, commercial or studio films, the budget that is allocated to indie films for P&A, or you know, publicity and advertising, is minuscule or sometimes non-existent. You know, people don't hear about that. And then the cinema owners don't want to put these films in their cinemas because they think that the, the audience, since they have not heard about the film, they will not come to see the film. So it's kind of like Cash 22. So what found out about the, uh, in the documentary films? For documentary film, I think right now, um, there are more platforms that independent filmmakers can explore. But I think it's still quite early stage to screen in the cinema, for Thai cinema or even documentary, have the maximum one week. After that, uh, if the film does not make any revenue, that shelf life you know, has just the only one week, that's all. And how about the television and cable networks? For Thai television network, uh, there's also interested in the rating. So to screen the independent films or documentaries, I think, you know, it's that little chance because, you know, they're still depending on, you know, the advertising that depend on the rating. But right now, as I suggested earlier, that we have more chance because right now we have a streaming platform like uh, Netflix or View, and they are, you know, open to new contents and they constantly, you know, need to change the contents. So I think there's more chance, you know, coming up for the new generation. I was going to say the same thing that with international platforms or streaming platforms, they're quite active in uh, getting the content and they reach out to the filmmakers across uh, the board, you know, the commercial ones, the indie ones. Yeah, it, it might create more opportunities in the future, but for how long, I cannot say. <laughs> If you can choose, how will you make your film available in Thailand? Yeah, if I could choose, then I would like to have it screened in the cinemas nationwide, <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Um, also, we have it available on the internet, like on, on platforms like, like iTunes. Yeah. I mean, it's already available on, on Documentary Club. Also, streaming platforms like Netflix. Yeah. yeah. 
what the situation with indie filmmakers in other country when they get award? Do they their film get shown in the local markets? Sadly, I think it's quite similar to Thailand. Mostly, as far as I know, independent filmmakers uh, are kind of similar wherever you are. You know, the kind of films that you make get limited distribution and appeals only to certain demographic uh, within your country. But the, you know, the people who watch them are really dedicated fans. But you know, they're not a huge group of people. Of course, there are cases where some films do better than others, but generally speaking, these films have limited audiences. Classic questions of funding: Where do the funding for the indie filmmaker come from? I can only speak for myself. <laughs> for my films, uh, I try to actually make it a little bit differently each time in terms of funding. The first film, I got some funding from international film funds, but it wasn't enough to cover the whole production expense. So, and, but that was my first feature, so it was very hard to get off the ground. And uh, I then borrowed money for my family and friends. And then later on, when I managed to get funding for post-production, I offset the production costs and then paid back. With the second film, it was a little, it was actually it took longer to make, but I managed to get more uh, funds from abroad, and but also in Thailand. And then with the third film, I did crowdfunding. So I try to, you know, like not repeat myself because getting film funds uh, is very, very hard. You know, you have to kind of reach out, uh, spread your net wide, so to speak. So p a w a n what is your situation? For me, you know, like um, I resource to every mean I can get, whether personal saving and uh, NGOs funding, government funding, and uh, as well as international funding. But you know, the international funding is, you know, like a chance to get into the film festival is, you know, is also limited, and you know, people all over the world scrambling for the same money. So you know, with the limited money, the film festivals need security and certainty. So the money often, you know, go to the same experience producer or directors. So you know that's very competitive. But right now, I think that there's more chance, especially for documentaries, because you know we have like um, the funding from various government agencies and NGOs. That's also an, an alternative, you know, for documentary filmmakers. Can Thai indie filmmakers earn a living from making films, or can it be a career? For independent film, you mean? Right, just right. independent. No, <laughs> if if you want to be an indie filmmaker, you have to have many things going, like not just making films. If you're a commercial director, I guess you you know you may survive and may even flourish as a you know, filmmaker as a career. But to make indie films, most people I know have uh, many jobs. Yeah, they do wear different hats. I make film, and and then I uh, occasionally I teach. I was actually teaching full time in the U.S. Uh, in the last two years, and then I moved back here, and I still teach once in a while. Actually, I agree with k u n m a You know that um, just answer these um, questions. I I think it's quite difficult because you know independent films for me does not make much money. You need to make and m a d e in every way you can, uh, like you know my students. If they want to go into this route, you know they have to do other jobs as well, like they have to do like uh, the commercial uh, advertising films, or they have to make a music video for the living. And then you know if they have time or energy, they will you know continue to do uh, their independent films uh, by applying for the funding from international film festival. But you know, if you like t h e n u m e r point, you know, he can do it. You know, he can switch between uh, independent mode and uh, studio mode. If you can do that, then you can, you know, uh, make a living as um, filmmakers. It sounds to me that it's, it's quite a struggle to make indie film. So why continue doing that? That's a tough question. Why we still do it? Because <laughs> you know it's. It's really painful, really, you know, to get all the money together and uh, to try to finish one film. It take up 
you know, your life for many years. But I think, you know, <laughs> I still, you know, have a story I want to tell. Even if I struggle, I, I still want to do it. I know it's, an, it's an addiction. I would just say that. <laughs> <laughs> That is a promise that we will see more works from them. Both the studio and independent movie markets have seen the change and new trend in distribution or how people will access their works. They agree that DVD selling is no longer a viable distribution channel and SVOD through streaming is up and coming. Much more contents will be needed for online media services to provide to their clients. People in the movie industries have already foreseen that there will be competition to produce more film works in terms of quality and quantity. So hopefully, that will open a new horizon for Thai indie filmmakers far and wide. Many thanks to our guest filmmaker, Anosha So Vichakon Pong, and Assistant Professor Dr. So Pa Wan Bun Nimit. And thank you for listening. See you again next Saturday. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Simfa Tunsorawut with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. <laughs>